Good evening, everyone. This is the sixth year of our 100, which has really become the heart and soul of our Mass General Cancer Center. For me, it's just simply amazing to look at this room. When we first started six years ago, we had 250 people at this event, and I can tell you none of them really knew what, the, what to expect at the dinner. Tonight, we have almost 1,000 people here. Over the past six years, we've honored 600 remarkable individuals who were selected out of 2,700 nominations. We've also raised more than $5 million. Where does the money go? The 100 Fund supports research in the laboratory. It provides seed funding for the most exciting high-risk and high-reward projects. It supports informatics and computational biology to help integrate the incredible amount of genomic data that we're now collecting from different types of cancer. The 100 Fund also supports research in the clinic, our first in human clinical trials of new drugs in the Tremere Center. That's where mo the most promising targeted therapies are being tested for the first time ever in patients whose tumors have been tested for genetic markers of response. And the 100 goes to supportive care programs, acupuncture, music, and art therapy for patients undergoing chemotherapy. It supports our survivorship programs, community outreach, and patient education. And that's really what makes the Mass General Cancer Center such an incredible institution. We have the most advanced science paired with the most compassionate care. We value both. We honor both. And that is what defines us. This year is actually our 25th birthday as a cancer center. It's the typical MGH blend of the old and the new. Mass General is just a little over 200 years old, and as you heard, it opened the nation's first tumor clinic in the early 1900s. And here we are, the youngest by far among the nation's top 10 cancer centers. 25 years ago, in 1988, the Mass General trustees voted to establish a cancer center with the stated goal of bringing together clinical and research efforts within a world-class general hospital to help fight cancer. Our founding director and 2008 100 honoree, Dr. Kurt Isselbacher, is here with us tonight. Over the last 25 years, our clinical operations have grown by 1,100%. That's actually a pretty scary number. Uh, last year, we had 170,000 visits treating 9,000 new patients from across the country and worldwide. Across all of MGH, we have 400 clinical cancer specialists, 300 laboratory scientists, 24 cross-disciplinary disease centers, over 450 clinical trials, and more than $100 million in research funding annually. In terms of philanthropy, 25 years ago, 800 donors contributed a total of half a million dollars to cancer research at MGH. And last year, more than 20,000 donors contributed over $31 million to MGH cancer programs and research. Our own community has grown to include nearly a dozen affiliated institutions. And tonight, we honor colleagues at some of these institutions, including Dr. Joel Schwartz, Medical Director at Mass General North Shore Cancer Center in Danvers. And Mary Fay, Nurse Manager at the Mass General Cancer Center at Emerson Bethke Hospital in Concord. and Kathy Quinn, nurse navigator at Wentworth Douglas Hospital in Dover, New Hampshire. In 25 years, we've become one of the most productive, focused, and successful cancer centers in the country. This is really an unprecedented time of discovery and progress in cancer, both at MGH and throughout the world. Many of the 100 honorees in this room tonight helped get us to this point. You've heard about Dr. Julian Adams, a chemist who developed the drug Velcade, which as you heard from Ken Damon, is an extremely effective treatment for multiple myeloma. <laughs> J. 
Julian is now the leader of discovery at Infinity Pharmaceuticals, developing drugs for lung and pancreatic cancer. Dr. James Bradner from Dana-Farber, also a chemist who specializes in making new types of drugs against targets that were not previously druggable. And Dr. Tyler Jacks, director of the Koch Institute at MIT, who's known throughout the scientific world for developing genetic models of cancer that have been used to better understand and treat cancers of the lung, colon, and sarcomas. Over the past 25 years, the Mass General Cancer Center has made important scientific and clinical contributions. Discovering genes that can drive or suppress the growth of, the growth of cancer cells developing novel diagnostic technologies, leading major clinical trials of new targeted therapies, and setting treatment standards in lung cancer, melanoma, and breast cancer that are now used throughout the world. Among the MGH 100 tonight that we're honoring are Dr. David Fisher, Chief of Dermatology and an authority on melanoma biology and the prevention of melanoma. Dr. Shiv Pillai, an immunology researcher who's also been recognized as one of the most popular and effective teachers at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Jay Leffler, Chief of Radiation Oncology. Jay is a major leader in the development and application of proton therapy and Dr. Doug Matheson, Head of Thoracic Surgery. <laughs> and known for the most exceptional surgical skills and profound dedication to his patients. And Dr. Laurie Wirth, a leader. a leading physician scientist testing novel targeted therapies for head and neck cancers. Bringing science and compassion together in the care of patients with cancer is the very essence of personalized medicine. Cancer, as you know, is personal at all levels. It's personal in the way it affects each person, his or her family, and their deepest relationships with each other and with their caregivers. And cancer is personal in a scientific way also each tumor being different genetically. That's what's now called precision medicine. We're aiming to treat each tumor according to its individual genetic makeup. So where are we headed over the next 25 years? The key, I believe, will be to diagnose cancer at an early stage, before it spreads, when all our weapons against cancer, surgery, radiation, and targeted therapies are most likely to result in cure. Early diagnosis of cancer is not easy. It's going to require developing new technologies, combining molecular genetics with bioengineering, integrating imaging with minimally invasive biopsies, building connections with primary care, and doing all of this within the changing landscape of healthcare economics. And nowhere, nowhere can this be done better than at MGH. MGH is where there's an incredible breadth of talent across all of these areas that positions us and helps us lead a major shift like this in how we approach cancer. But we sure can't do this alone. Cancer may be personal, but it affects us all. It won't be solved by one person, but by a community that includes teams of scientists, clinicians, advocates, volunteers, and philanthropists. And that brings us back to the 100 honorees in this room tonight. Tonight, we're recognizing Nancy and Richard Kelleher, Boston philanthropists. Boston philanthropists who have set their sights on finding a cure for breast cancer, a goal they say they must accomplish for all their daughters and granddaughters. We recognize Josh Summer, a Cordoma survivor and at age 25, co-founder and executive director of the Cordoma Foundation, 
which has transformed the entire field of chordoma research, providing nearly $4 million to fund laboratories across the world, and really creating a community for researchers and patients alike. And we honor Bob Howe, Vietnam War veteran, two-time cancer survivor, and board member of our Cancer Center Leadership Council, who brings immense talent, charisma, and heart to all that he does. <laughs> Bob is the co-founder of the Boston chapter of Golfers Against Cancer, which has raised $1 million for breast cancer research. And also among this year's 100 honorees are Chad Juras, a cancer survivor and magician who inspires and entertains young cancer patients in his quest to spread the magic around the world. We honor Marla Sewin, who turned her birthdays into fundraisers for the MGH Melanoma Center and who continues to inspire her family, friends, and caregivers in the relentless pursuit for a cure. And we honor Dr. Richard Deming, medical director of the Mercy Cancer Center in Des Moines, Iowa, who leads cancer survivors on trips to climb Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro, where they realize their strength and regain their hope. I can't name them all, but all the 100 are simply exceptional and amazing people. And at this point, I'd like to invite all the 100 honorees for 2013 to please stand and be recognized. We are here tonight to celebrate 100 extraordinary people. And next year, we'll celebrate another class of honorees in the year after that. And I promise you that every year we will celebrate the 100 until cancer is no longer the scourge that it is today. This will happen in our lifetime. And maybe 25 years from now, we'll have a class reunion for all the honorees of so many years, and we'll celebrate the very last 100 as we celebrate the end of cancer. <laughs> 